Welcome back for another awesome week of Sunday School. This week, we're going to continue with our series, Big Idea. It says, though we are far from perfect, God empowers us to become who we are meant to be. And this week in particular, uh, we're going to be learning that if we revere or fear God, like Isaac, God will empower us to do great things. And our memory verse is still John 1:12. It says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So this, this week we're going to be talking a little bit about fear and a fear of God. But it's a little different than you're, you would typically uh, think the word of fear. So when we fear God, it's more of uh, a, a respect of God. You know, and Sister Kellyanna is going to talk a little bit more about the fear of God, and then Sister Christina later is going to tell us a story about Isaac. So I'm going to pass it off to Sister Kellyanne. Hi Jungle Explorers, thank you for joining us for another week of online Sunday School. This week we're going to be talking about fear. That's right, we're going to be talking about fear, and I have my friends here, Hank and Petunia. Hello everybody! I don't want to talk about fear. I'm too scared. Oh, don't worry, Hank. I'll explain a little bit more what I mean when I say fear. I'm not afraid of anything. Oh, I you believe can't scare it. Me. That's our petunia for you. You're just so brave always. Oh, of course I am. Well, I know fear makes us think scary and bad, but there are two types of fear. Did you guys know that? I have no idea. Fear is fear. Well, fear, when we talk about it, most times it's the bad kind of fear. It's the fear that makes people feel scared and it makes people feel uneasy. And it's the fear that comes up when you hear a scary story or when you watch something oh. scary. Oh, oh, that's oh. bad fear. But there's a good kind of fear. Did you guys know that? Did you know that, Petunia? I have no idea. Well, there is a good kind of fear, and it's the kind of fear that helps us to obey our parents, that helps us to obey God's word. That is the good fear. Oh. Well, today, I have a little story, but I want your help, Hank and Petunia. It's going to be like a Mad Lib. When I say I need a name or a word, I'm going to ask either you, Petunia, or you, Hank, to help me fill in the blank. Is it a scary mad lib? <laughs> no, but it'll help us understand a little bit better between good fear and bad fear. Are you ready? You'll be alright. <laughs> Are you guys ready? I'm ready! Alright, awesome. So, I'm going to start with you, Petunia. I need a girl's name. Mm. Well, how about the best girl's name there is? And what is that? Petunia! Okay, you know what? We'll use Petunia, and it is a beautiful name. So, it starts with Petunia. And Petunia was a little girl who wanted her parents to take her to the blank. Now, I need your help, Hank, to fill in this blank. Where did she want to go? Well, with our jungle theme, I've been wanting to go to the Animal Kingdom. The Animal Kingdom at Disney. Disney? That is awesome. Okay. Oh, yes. So Petunia wanted her parents to take her to the Animal Kingdom to see the baby. And I need a name of an animal. Do you think you can help me out? I love it. So, to see the baby zebra, her big brother, and Hank, I'm going to ask for a boy's name. Her big brother. Hmm. Well, Petunia, do you have a brother? I do have a brother. Oh my goodness. His name is Patterson. How about Patterson? Okay. Patterson is perfect. So her bro big brother, Patterson, did not like 
the animal kingdom at all. <gasps> what? That's crazy, mm. right? Well, he didn't like it. He would rather blank. So another blank. What, what, a fun activity. What do you think you would like to do instead of going to the animal kingdom? Petunia. Just about nothing besides <laughs> skydiving. <gasps> skydiving, that's right. Our brave girl Petunia, she loves skydiving. Well, in this story, Petunia's big brother, Patterson, he would rather go skydiving or stay home. He didn't want to go to the animal kingdom. Well, Petunia knew that if she cleaned her room, like her parents asked her to do, she'd have a better chance of going to the animal kingdom. But her brother, Patterson, tried to scare her. Now this is the bad fear that we're talking about. He tried to scare her by saying that he would mess up her room after she cleaned it so they wouldn't have to go. <gasps> Can you believe that? That mean Patterson. Does Patterson mean like that sometimes? Sometimes he's a little sneaky and he plays pranks on me, but he never tries to ruin our trips to the animal kingdom. Well, that's good. But in our story, oh, Patterson wanted to mess it all up. So Petunia knew that she shouldn't fear her brother. Do you fear your brother in real life, Petunia? <laughs> Not at all. No, Patterson is really nice and she didn't, she doesn't, she knew she shouldn't fear her brother because that was the bad kind of fear. And she already had a healthy and good fear for her parents. And she knew that that is the good kind of fear. So she didn't fear her brother Patterson and she did fear or respect her parents. And that's a good kind of fear. So when Petunia finished cleaning her room, her parents were so happy that they took Petunia and Patterson to the animal kingdom to see the baby zebra. They even let Petunia name, sorry, I lost track on my page, name the baby animal zebra. No way! She named it. What do we think we should name it, Petunia? It's your name in the story. I would name a baby zebra Zephany. Zephany? Zephany! I like it. It starts with a Z just like zebra. So she named Zephany, it Zephany. Zebra. Awesome. And Petunia's good fear of her parents led to obedience and it paid off. She got to go to the animal kingdom. So that's my little story today and I hope that helped you to better understand Good fear and bad fear, right? Good fear leads us to be obedient. It leads us to be respectful. But bad fear, it just makes us feel bad. It makes us feel scared. Sometimes it can even make us feel sick, right? So we want to have a good, healthy fear. And we need to know that bad fear, that's not from God. It's from the devil himself, and he wants to hurt us with that. So we need to stay away from things that make us feel scared right? Because that's the bad fear, but we need to hold on to our good fear. Well, thank you so much, Hank and Petunia, for helping me with the story this week. You're welcome. Thank you for explaining the difference between bad fear and good fear. Well, I'm glad I could help you guys out and you got to learn something new. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Sister Christina. She has an awesome Bible lesson for us this week. In the last lesson, we learned how God fulfilled his promise to Abraham. He fulfilled his promise through the birth of Isaac. After all, Abraham was 100 years old when Sarah had Isaac, and Isaac was the answer to God's promise. God promised to bless Abraham's descendants all through the boy Isaac. Throughout Isaac's youth, Abraham taught his boy about this awesome, incredible, wonderful God who called Abraham out of a distant land. As a result, Isaac's fear for God, reverence for God, and obedience to God were unflinching. But this was about to be put to the test. One day God spoke to Abraham, and he said to Abraham, I want you to do something special for me. Abraham replied, Anything, Lord. I will do whatever you ask. Good, God said. Here is what I want you to do. I want you to take your promised son Isaac 
to a mountain in the land of Moriah. I will show you the mountain when you get there. Abraham pondered, Moriah is a three-day journey, but I'll do anything you ask, Lord. Good, God said. I want you and Isaac to climb up that mountain and then offer Isaac as a burnt offering. Surely Abraham hesitated when he heard what God wanted him to do. You want Isaac to offer a burnt offering? No, God corrected. I want Isaac to be the burnt offering. Surely Abraham slumped as he replied, Anything, Lord, I'll do whatever you ask. The next day Abraham woke up early as he gathered Isaac and two servants, and they hit the road. They saddled the donkey with wood for a burnt offering and started on their journey. On the third day of traveling, Abraham looked up and saw the mountain God was indicating to him. They stopped. Abraham told the servants to wait with the donkey while he and Isaac went up ahead to worship. Abraham asked Isaac to hold the wood for the burnt offering as they continued up the mountain. Recognizing something was unusual, Isaac asked, Dad, I see the flint and I see the wood for the fire, but where is the lamb? We can't have a burnt offering without a lamb, can we? With sadness, Abraham answered, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. Surely the awkward answer puzzled Isaac, but without any further questions, Isaac and Abraham continued up the mountain. Isaac feared and trusted both his father and God completely. They finally arrived at the location where God had led as Abraham built a stone altar. He kept an eye out, but there was no other sacrifice for a burnt offering other than Isaac. In humble obedience, Abraham did as he was told. He tied up Isaac's hands and feet and laid him on the altar. Isaac didn't fight or run away, but out of reverence or fear for God, they willingly obeyed. Even in this difficult situation, they still trusted God. Abraham took out his knife and raised the blade over Isaac. Suddenly, an angel called out from the heavens, Abraham, Abraham, do not hurt your boy. You and Isaac have proven that you fear God. Abraham looked up to see something wonderful. In a nearby bush, there was a ram caught by its horns. God had provided a ram for the burnt offering. Out of deep respect for Abraham and Isaac, they both wanted to please God. Isaac was willing to lay down his life to be obedient. Like with Isaac, God is looking for people to show fear and reverence. And if we do, God will empower us to do great things.
so much, Jungle Explorers, for joining us this week. Again, us talking about faith. We just heard an awesome Bible lesson from Brother Dan talking all about Abraham and how great his faith was. He was a faithful man and God blessed him because of that. So we're going to just go ahead right now. I want to pray together. Let's pray that we would remember how important it is to have faith in God and to be faithful to him, faithful to his word. So why don't we pray about that? And let's pray that we get to see each other again in Sunday school class soon because I miss you guys so very much. So why don't you take a moment with me? Let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes, let's pray, but why don't you use your voice? Just speak to God. He loves to hear you. Jesus, we love you so much. We thank you, God, for another amazing lesson. We thank you for your word that we get to read that helps us to grow, that teaches us. I am so grateful and thankful that your word is a living word and that it constantly teaches me and that I get to learn from it. Jesus, I pray that you would help me and that you would help the people that are at home to remember how important it is to have faith and to continue to be faithful to you and faithful to your word. Jesus, I pray that you would just touch our world, God, that you would bring healing to our people to this world, God, so that we could come back together and be in Sunday school class together because I just can't wait to just fellowship with all of you guys at home. And Lord, we know that you are going to do great things. I believe that you have great revival plan for this church. And Lord, I just want to thank you for that. Why don't we just go ahead and clap our hands, use your voice, and just worship God for a moment with me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I love you and I thank you. You are so great. You are the almighty God. You are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you so much, Jungle Explorers. It was another amazing week, and we'll see you again for some more online Sunday school next week. Stay safe, and bye, guys.